Welcome back. It's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today from McFarlane Toys in their DC Multiverse line, we are featuring Batman as portrayed by actor George Clooney in the film Batman and Robin. Okay, so before we take a look at this action figure, um, I thought it'd be fun to compare it with an actual Batman and Robin figure from the actual time period. And we have this right here. Um, it was produced by Kenner back in 1997. It's one of the many Batman figures uh, from the Batman and Robin line. This one just happens to be Heat Scan Batman. So um, even though we're looking at action figures from uh, two completely uh, different generations of toys, uh, for me it's kind of fun to see you know where we were versus where we are now. Um, I was a collector back <laughs> in the 90s, um, and I do remember when Batman and Robin came out. Um, I actually liked the film a lot, and uh, I remember this line of toys. This this line of action figures and also the Batman Forever line of action figures I thought were just uh, incredible. Um, they were well sculpted. Uh, the presentation was really awesome, and they give you a broad range of different Batman-themed characters. Of course, it was always difficult to find the actual Batman that appeared in the movie. Uh, much like this figure here, this was one with some sort of weird colorful gimmick. In, the, in this case, it was Heat Scan Batman. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, the sculpting was well done. Uh, if you're a child, you got a lot of fun accessories with some cool play features. And it was just, it was just really awesome. Um, you know, for many years, Kenner and Hasbro, they had the Batman and DC license. And they produced a broad range of action figures uh, during that time period, um, especially in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I think it's, it's fantastic. It's really cool. Uh, so much to my surprise, and I think to, to the surprise of a lot of fans, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of like a jaw-dropping thing when McFarlane announced on social media that they were producing, um, <laughs> you know, figures from like, you know, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Uh, it was, I don't know, like when they unveiled that um, Warner Brothers 106 pack that had all six of the movie Batmans, I thought that was just amazing. You know, for me that was really, really um, out of the blue, especially since they've been tackling so much of the uh, comic books and the more recent movies. But it's, it's fun to see that, you know, in the spirit of things that they're going back in time and giving us, you know, some really cool action figures based on different properties, you know, not just the comic books or video games, but even, you know, diving deep into, like, uh, the older movies from, like, the, the 90s. So what we have here is the George Clooney Batman from Batman and Robin. Um, it's a fantastic-looking figure. Uh, if you bought the Warner Brothers 106-pack, you already have this figure. Um, I think the, the only difference between this one and the six-pack version is the cape. Um, I believe this one has a plastic material cape. Whereas the Warner Brothers 100 had the cloth goods cape. Um, as you can see, it comes with the Build-A-Figure pieces for Mr. Freeze. And then we have Arnold here as Mr. Freeze. And then uh, here are all the different pieces. And then the other figures in the assortment. You have Batgirl. You have the Uma Thurman Poison Ivy. The Chris O'Donnell Robin. And of course the George Clooney Batman. The one thing with this line is that every time I see this, um, uh, this, this line of action figures, it makes me really, really itchy to like go back and hunt down some of the original toys. Uh, from 97 and 98 when uh, Kenner produced action figures for the film. Um, if you've been following my YouTube channel, you know, in, in videos from like the last few years, you'll recall some of my toy haul videos where I've actually started uh, recollecting some of the older uh, Batman movie figures, you know, whether it's Batman, Batman Returns, Batman and Robin, Batman Forever. All those older figures I think are, are really awesome to have. And let's, this guy's kind of stuck. Let's see if we get him out. There we go. And like most McFarlane figures, uh, you get the trading card, and then you get the display base. Uh, the trading card is essentially just a cropped up. This is a cropped out picture of just uh, George Clooney's face from the movie poster.
Uh, first impressions of the figure. It looks great. Um, I really like the shade of like black they use for the costume. It's kind of like almost like a very, very dark gray. Uh, and it's a kind of a really nice matte finish. It's not really reflective of the light all too much. And it, it just looks really nice. The sculpting looks well done. Um, the likeness to George Clooney looks pretty decent. You know, you're only seeing his lower half of his face, but I think it does a does a pretty good job of capturing the essence of the character. Uh, the cape's a nice thin material too. Uh, I'm kind of a stickler on capes. You know, if you've watched my videos before, you know, I hate capes that are too thick and too heavy. Uh, this one feels surprisingly pretty thin, although it's... It's kind of weird. It feels like it still has like the mold release agent on it because it kind of has this weird like chemical feel to it. It, it. it feels like there's like a residue on my fingers after I handle it. And if you look at the cape carefully, it's kind of dirty looking. So I'm assuming the material wasn't cleaned after it was produced. So... There's pros and cons to like having a cloth goods cape versus a plastic one and vice versa. Uh, the cloth goods cape is nice because um, as I've seen some people point out, if you bought the Warner Brothers uh, 100 set, the cloth goods capes allows you to fit the figures inside of the, the Batmobile. Whereas you could do that with a, the plastic cape also, but you're going to get a much easier fit with a cloth cape than a plastic one. If you're into figure photography, I think the plastic cape looks better. Um, unless you end up getting like one of those other capes, you know, often you might find the unofficial third party capes where they're like wired. And those are really cool because you can like pose the capes dynamically. Alright, so we have the George Clooney Batman from Batman and Robin, and I gotta say, the cape, it's kind of disgusting. Um, like I mentioned, there's some sort of residue on here, so every time I handle it, my, my fingers feel like sticky and kind of like chalky, if that makes any sense. It's just really weird. I might have to like clean this off. And if you look, it's like completely filthy and dirty, so I don't know what's going on here. Uh, but the figure, it's it's really well done. I think the presentation's nice. But the figure, just, just, much like the cape, the figure's just kind of like covered in some sort of weird residue. And it's, it's kind of the marring of the appearance of the figure. Um, also, his one horn is a little bit warped from the package. You can easily remedy that by submerging it in like hot water and then just bending it back in place once the plastic softens. Uh, the likeness of George Clooney, like I said, I think it's pretty decent. Even though you're, you're only seeing half of his face, I think it really captures his jawline and his lips perfectly because it you know, kind of does look like Clooney. And of course, you have the Joel Schumacher nipples, which <laughs> often draw, draws the ire from fans. Um, and then there's the bat butt. Again, if you look, there's the figures is kind of like, it's like kind of filthy looking. I'm not sure if, if there's like the mold release agent or what, but the quality of the plastic doesn't look very pristine on this figure. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't look well. You see all these little kind of like dimples and dents and scratches. You know, unlike some of the other McFarlane figures, for example, here's this guy here. You know, the plastic on this, it's really well done. Uh, this is like a first generation McFarlane figure. And if you notice, the plastic quality is a little bit better. So it's a lot cleaner. You don't have any of that weird residue on the cape. You see, it's all kind of like chalky there, and it just feels really weird. Uh, but looking past that, uh, again, the figure is well done. The sculpting's nice. Um, I kind of wish they'd do a better job with the, uh, the cut along the um, diaphragm or mid-torso. Um, I've said this before in other videos, it looks kind of weird how they try to carve it out into like 
to conform with the shapes of the muscles. It just doesn't look very natural. I think there's better ways they, they could approach that. Uh, like this one here, it's an older figure, but it's a little bit cleaner the way it's cut up in that area. Um, there's some discolor. I don't want to say discoloration, but there's a disconnect with the different shades of plastic. Uh, for example, the kind of rubbery diaper is kind of almost like a grayish hue versus uh, the dark black, bluish gray of the um, legs and the torso. The fins are kind of warped a little. So I, I think it's a fantastic figure. The only thing right now that's bothering me is the, the, some of the quality control issue. Like the cape, this feels disgusting. It's really filthy looking. The plastic quality is kind of marred. Which is a shame because I think if it was, um, you know, a little bit more pristine looking, you see what I mean? It's like all scuffed up and scratched on the boots. And the knees are really different <laughs> shade of plastic altogether. Um, you're not going to notice it from like, if you're like, you know, two feet away, but upon closer inspection, you'll see that the, 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 um, the plastic material is a completely different color. So there's some disconnect there. Uh, the this is something. Oh God, I haven't seen this in a long time. The um, the ankle joints are very unsightly. It's like a, it's like a tennis ball between the foot and the ankle, which is a shame because there's some figures where they're pretty good at hiding that. And some of the first generation McFarlane figures, they kind of su suffered from that problem where the ball joints they looked exactly like ball joints, like that right there. You know, they've been doing a better job of, like, sculpting the wrists so they conform with the shapes of the forearm for a cleaner, more natural look. But here, it's just kind of dis it's kind of weird. I mean, for one, the ball joint's black versus the, the blue of the boots. And then it's just, this really sticks out like a sore thumb. But don't, don't let that deter you from getting this figure, you know. I doubt we'll get another Clooney figure. I mean, we might, who knows, we might get some sort of weird repaint or something, but... Um, it's still a nice figure. You know, I got to fix that horn, scrub them down with some detergent just to get all this filth off. Other uh, articulation, his head moves as you look down, looks down as you look up. Arms rotate. He has that ball socketed butterfly underneath. It allows for an extended range of movement, a nice smooth moving um, a bicep swivel. Double pinned elbows, the pins are exposed, articulated wrists, uh, mid torso cut, does he bend forward, about there, arches back, pretty decent. Yeah, there's just a lot of weird unsightly things, like there's this, uh, either a mold line or seam line running across, it's not very clean, and it doesn't want to roll back. <laughs> so, uh, it does articulate at the waist also. Legs kick up. They kick outward. Nice ratcheted sound. Uh, double pinned knees. Again, a different color of the knees versus the rest of the leg. Articulated ankles and toes. So, overall, um, I think it's a great figure. Um, you know, maybe my figure, my copies is kind of funky. <laughs> maybe I'll get a better one. Uh, but for... I don't know. I kind of feel like for a figure I've been... It's a figure I didn't ask for, but it's a figure I, I'd, I'll i gladly take just because I'm a big fan of uh, the movie and I'm also a big fan of the old Kenner action figures. So for me, it's nice to revisit this era of Batman. I just kind of wish the quality control was a lot better on this. Like, the, I, it this bothers me. This cape is just disgusting. Every time I touch it, I feel this weird sticky residue on my fingers. It bothers me that the plastic's kind of like scuffed up and scarred around certain areas. And it's not very clean either. You see the seam lines and the mold lines running around the figure. Uh, generally, it wouldn't bother me, but, you know, with the, the high quality of action figures that we've gotten from McFarlane over the last year and a half, you know, this one kind of falls a little bit short in terms of the production quality. Aesthetically, it looks like the, the Clooney Batman. You know, it's well sculpted, the proportions are nice, the musculature is spot on. I like the, that the cape's a thin material. 
But yeah, if it didn't have these quality control issues, I think this would be like a perfect figure. But again, like I said, don't let my the issues I have with my figure deter you from getting it. You know, I still think it's well worth the purchase. I just kind of wish <laughs> my copy was a little bit more pristine. This thing's kind of a mess. All right, so with that being said, let's wrap this one up. Uh, once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.